Hello, everyone. Welcome to the session for Azure Redis and .NET as Power. I'm Catherine, a product manager in the Azure Redis team. Assuming you watched the earlier sessions on .NET as Power fundamentals, we will focus on Azure Redis integrations. We'll go through the scenarios for using Azure Redis with your .NET as Power application. And we will have two demos, one on the Azure Redis output cache. The other one will be a real-time leaderboard with active geo replication using Azure Cache for Redis Enterprise. What are the scenarios for using Azure Redis with your .NET as Power application? Redis is an in-memory key value store that's traditionally used for caching scenarios. This includes output cache, distributed cache, station, and so on. So we use Azure Redis to improve the performance of your application and store the volatile data. The advantage for using Azure Redis versus improper caching is that an external cache store would provide you the resiliency during server failover event. And in case of uh, scaling out your hosting servers, having an external cache will also provide the consistency on data. And it will not consume any of your application servers, memory, and the CPU resource. Azure Redis is also used widely as real-time streaming platforms. A classic scenario is Leaderboard, which is widely used for gaming applications and finance, e-commerce, and so on. Azure Cache for Redis Enterprise would provide active, active geo replication for your globally distribute, distributed microservice app. And this will also get you the 59 SLA with active dual replication. Another common scenario for using Redis is message brokers. In microservice architecture, you want to get the scalability and the service uh, responsibility segregation. So Redis can be a message broker to decouple your front end and the back end. And the communication can be done through the uh, Redis message broker. And uh, for Azure Cache for Redis Enterprise, we also provide modules for advanced usages, such as uh, the vector similarity search that's commonly used for intelligent applications that comes with the Redis search module. Uh, Redis JSON provides you a good NoSQL data store. Redis Bloom and Redis Time Series are used commonly in IoT applications. Let's look at our first demo application using Azure Redis for output caching. For the architecture diagram, we will look at a .NET as Power application hosted by Azure Container Apps, talking to Redis for caching the web front end web page output. And Azure is a secure cloud, so uh, we will use Entra ID and the key vault to back up the service-to-service -service communication or any potential secrets and continuous monitoring with Azure Monitor services. This is our Azure Redis uh, version of the SPAR application that uses output cache. All my project code um, is ba basically scaffolded from the project new create experience. You just have to use that Redis checkbox for adding Redis as a service reference and having this code in your app host program.cs file. In order to use Azure Redis, you add this dot publish as Azure Redis line to uh, your service reference. And that's all you have to do to get started. Let's look at our application in Azure.
here navigating to my resource group that's hosting my as power Redis application. Just so you know, uh, we are really using an Azure Cache for Redis instance, and this is done from the Azure Developer CLI AZD app command. If we go to the web frontend, Go to the weather page. As we refresh, you can see the numbers don't change for a while. This is because everything is cached in the Redis instance. If we go to the Redis instance itself, we can verify that the page has been cached. This console enables me to use Azure Redis uh, or Redis CLI with the Azure Cache for Redis instance, and this is the cached record. Our next demo is on the Active Geo replication powering a real time leaderboard. So for a globally distributed application, you want to deploy multiple instances of your app closer to where the customers are in order to reduce the network latency. So suppose uh, you are a gaming application, you deploy one instance in central US and another instance in East US. Players in each region should be able to see the same game leaderboard. So uh, if you store your leaderboard data in an Azure Cache for Redis instance, somehow this data needs to be in sync. And that is where the active geo replication comes from. A lot of other data services would do geo replication with one active and one passive rep replica, meaning read only replica. But in our case, Azure Cache for Redis Enterprise provide read and write capabilities to all replicas configured in one geo replication group. Let's take a look at the code. So in the same program.cs file of the app host project, I'm specifying publish Redis as connection string. So during publish, I can pass in the credentials um, for connecting to a um, an existing pre-configured active geo replication infrastructure. That is one way to um, make sure uh, you can like configure your infrastructure separately and reuse it for any of the application. And all the passwords are dealt securely like masked and stored in key vault. I'm also adding cache, uh, Redis cache as a reference to the API service project and the um, web front-end project. So I can uh, refer to this Redis instance in both places. Starting with the API service. Notice in the program.cs file, I'm adding Redis client with the reference to the earlier configured Redis instance. So this allows me to obtain a connection multiplexer object during the service startup. And from this point on, I can continue with the normal type exchange Redis uh, library and the reuse the code for leaderboard. I have two methods here. The map guide allows my front end to read the leaderboard and the map post would allow my web front end to write into the leaderboard with the player's name and uh, associated score. And in my web application, 
I created one more uh, API client class to allow these uh, APIs to be used with my uh, Blazor frontend component. Here's the code for calling these APIs. Now, um, let's take a look at this in Azure. You see, I have two SPAR projects deployed to my container apps in two different resource groups, one in the central US region and the other one in the East US region. And uh, I'll show you the two instances of the Redis cache. This is my central US instance of the Redis cache. And if I go to the active geo replication setting, you can see it's linked with another instance from East US. Now let's see how this works. So um, I have two instances of my container app hosting the .NET SPAR application, one in the East US, the other in the Central US, connected to two instances each of, of the Azure um, Redis and Enterprise instances. So uh, if I continue to play game here, this is the East US instance. Uh, under player name, say play game, you see my leaderboard is updated here. And for the other region, if I'm a player entering this, refreshing the page, I can see the same leaderboard information as the previous one. And just to, to show the active, active aspect, I can write to both Redis cache. If I update the leaderboard here on the other one, refresh, I see the same information. So you get all these uh, advantages for using the Azure Cache for Redis Enterprise uh, with Active Geo Replication to power your real-time streaming globally distributed .NET as per applications. For all the concepts and the sample code, you can find them in the link here. And thank you so much for watching.